Hey everyone, uh, today we're gonna start the YZ250 Enduro build. Uh, I've already kind of done some work to it in the past. It was like over a year ago, I started rebuilding this thing and then I just decided to do mountain biking all the time. So it got put on the back burner, but today we're gonna revitalize the project and finally get it going. Tearing it down to the frame, that way we can send it off to powder coat because I can't put anything back on the bike without that being done. Uh, we're gonna inspect it, make sure everything's looking good. There's a few things that concern me on it and we'll go over those. But I'm also gonna be starting a build sheet today. I don't need this thing to be super pretty. It's gonna look good, but basically I don't wanna be afraid to take this thing out into the woods and beat it up, uh, cause that's what it's meant for. It's meant to be ridden. So with that, let's start tearing into it. So there's two main reasons why I went with the steel frame over the aluminum frame. And one is obviously they're a little bit cheaper because they're a little bit older. Uh, but the second reason is that the steel frame is actually more supple than the aluminum one. So I felt like for off-road riding, that might be kind of a better attribute in the bike. In our area, it's super rocky and shaly. Uh, so three, five hours of riding on that, the steel frame might help you from, I don't know, feeling just a little less fatigued. As you can tell, these plastics have kind of had it. <laughs> they're all zip tied together, like all the way across. Uh, they're the UFO restyle ones, which I think look pretty good, but I'm gonna swap them all out for actual like Polo Sport modern restyle plastics. Oil filter's looking a little dirty, but you know, I've, I've done much, much worse in the past. <laughs> but down there, it looks like there's just a regular bolt. I like to have the wing nuts, you know, so you can do it by hand. So we'll need to replace that, add that to the parts list. But along with that bolt, this whole air box is gonna be updated with the new plastic kit. So this is just one thing that'll probably go in the trash, sadly. So there's one thing that's a little bit bizarre is this chain roller is just a solid piece of rubber. Uh, that should be on a bearing and spin because if that chain hits it, it's just gonna cut into it. So not sure what the thought process was there, but gonna need to add both the upper and the lower uh, chain roller to the list. So this here is another one of the pieces that kind of concerned me a little bit. It looks like they ran some aluminum frame guards that you know span from the subframe to the main frame for a long time and so long it rubbed it down quite a ways. It's really grooved. So there's a lot of missing material on this subframe. Um, I'm gonna run it like it is because these subframes aren't cheap. It's not broken, so if it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. But yeah, no, it's just a little bit concerning. But we'll clean it up, make sure it looks good. And yeah, maybe not run those style of frame guards in the future. It's a little weird. Always replace your bolts so you don't lose them like I always lose my bolts because I don't replace them. So this bike has these one and one eighth adapters that also raise the bars quite a bit. Um, it's not my favorite setup in the world, but I don't mind it too much just because I am a taller rider. I got the gangly arms, so it gives me a little bit more room for leg clearance uh, during the tight turns and stuff. So we'll probably keep those on there. Uh, obviously replace all the bolts because one's missing and they're kind of rusted in there. So that'll be something worth fixing up and uh, utilizing in the build. Yeah, so these bolts are pretty rusty in there. Hopefully they're not seized. We'll see if they'll break loose without any penetrating fluid. If not, we're gonna have to soak them. Ah, that turns the bars. That one's good. It's a little tight. Ah, oh, yeah. No, that should be fine. Yeah, that one was like loose. 
It's a little tougher, but it's coming. Yeah, with a little bit of cleaning up, we should be able to get these bolts usable. They're just mostly dirty, slightly rusty, but nothing terrible. So one of the worst things on this bike were the controls on it. The throttle tube was cracked and busted off. All the levers are super loose, which makes for a really bad feeling at the controls. Uh, this was the one that was on there. Like, as you can see, it's just a floppy mess. So all new controls are needed on this thing. Purchase, might be able to reuse this brake perch, I hope, uh, but we need new levers and clutch perch and all that stuff for this thing to make it feel good again. And like I said in the last video, this suspension has already been totally rebuilt, completely redone with really nice race tech stuff. So we're just gonna take it off, wrap it up in a towel and set it aside for now. That way the fork tubes or anything don't get marred up just sitting in storage, cause that would break my heart. So luckily the steering stem bearings on this guy are in like perfect condition. Um, I have taken them out and greased them once before, but there's like no rattly feeling, no pitting going on. So these feel great. So that's a huge uh, task that I won't have to do on this build, which I'm looking forward to not doing. To the frame. Um, I'm gonna call this week, get it on the schedule for powder coating. Uh, that way we can actually start building this bike back up. Everything looks good on the frame. I looked it over pretty closely, but you have to kind of sandblast it to really tell. So when it's at the shop, I'll have them look for cracks or anything. But the one thing that I can tell that's wonky on it are these foot peg tabs. So on this frame, those holes for the pins are actually egg shaped. So it's gonna make the foot pegs kind of floppy and just feel loose. Unfortunately, on these older steel frames, they are welded to the frame. On the newer aluminum ones, there's actually a bolt holding them on. So if they get worn out, you can just put new ones on there really easy. Uh, so I wanna fix that. Initially, I was thinking about welding on it, but I don't really want to hurt the tensile strength of this steel because it's heat treated. If I heat them back up, it might soften it up. And being that it's such a critical point, uh, I don't want to risk having those break off on me. So what I probably will do 
I'm not gonna hodgepodge stuff on this build, but this is the one point where I'm gonna use just generic hardware, I think. I'm gonna drill these holes out one size larger and just use some high strength steel bolts for it. That should hold up just fine, but they'll be bolts. I mean, it's not gonna be foot pins. So that's the only thing that's kind of wonky. If you guys have any other suggestions, I've heard maybe inserting brass bushings with some stock pins, but I also heard that those were out super fast. So for now, unless if I hear a better idea uh, from you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and use some high strength bolts for that. And that's really the only thing this frame needs to make it running brand new, so. So what color do you guys think we should paint this frame? Let me know in the comments below. Next time, while we wait to get it back from powder coating, we'll be tearing down the bottom end to get it ready for a complete rebuild plus some upgrades. Click subscribe to keep up with this build, and until next time, keep that rubber side down.